are you able to view my screen So uh, we have covered how to use how to uh, use multiple configuration files. So now I want to elaborate why should I even go for dependency injection. I don't want to use dependency injection and directly want to inject the values programmatically. Why should I even bother about using dependency injection? What's the advantages I get? Uh, so let us say you want to make a T let us have a real world example uh, so that after that we will map uh, the same requirement as per our dependency injection okay so let us say you want to make a tea for that you have to boil the milk add the sugar tea powder and some other extra stuff if you want to do in short you have to do the hard work all the hard work this thing right now if you like to get the same tea from another person who is from a 5 star hotel and take less amount of time to prepare tea and the quality is also acceptable. So you have a friend let us say who is working some 5 star hotel and he makes uh, some good uh, quality tea and within even much less amount of time than what you do and he does handle all the things like good milk good tea powder good sugar from where the sugar which quality of sugar from where tea powder assam or what he knows bigger knowledge than we, you do okay because he is a professional from the tea maker of five star hotel so don't you like to get a tea from that person or would you do the hard work so obviously anyone would choose five star hotel person to prepare their tea for them if he is going to do it for free right So, anyhow, the matter is it's for free and uh, if you like it, welcome to concept of dependency injection. So, so that's how uh, Spring is a professional guy like 5 star hotel who knows a lot of things because he is a professional one. He had born in that, he has grew up in that, he has many more, much more experience than what we do, we can do. So he is giving us all the things, he is taking care of the hardware, the resources from where to get which is the best of the best, he is caring about everything. So I would like the, those things to be done by the spring so that I could focus more on drinking my tea instead of preparing the tea. So drinking tea is the business logic over here. Okay. So I got my main object or uh, my main class which is dependent on mail class so let us uh, see the scenario of uh, where can dep uh, dependency injection comes in handy where the dependency injection we can actually make it work or uh, make it useful more useful so i have my main class and I have my mail class so my main class is nothing but uh, to send mails so that's my basic uh, scenario a, a simple module of sending mails to send mails i have a class which uses another class called mail and he in that class uh, from that class I am sending mails so I am a very good uh, core Java programmer so I know how to make things cohesive so instead of including the mail, mail logic into the main class I am including it in the mail class so even if I am a good programmer so let us see what are the drawbacks main application is dependent on the mail class to send mails so we'll use mail class accordingly in future we go uh, we go a new class say fast mail we want to have new class or new functionality to send mail called fast mail let us say we have upgraded from a normal mail normal mail to fast mail okay so we created a one more class called fast mail 
now i have to use uh, instead of mail class i have to go and change the coding of the main only the object creation and the calling part and uh, i instead of mail class i need to use fast mail class another class right now we need to remove the entry from the mail class from the main class and add the entry of fast mail class now again in future we got ultra fast one more uh, new thing ultra fast mailing okay we got a change again the main class so in this manner keeping uh, keep on changing as we'll get some new classes so mail fast mail ultra mail ultra fast mail ultra super light mail so there might be many more changes ipv4 mail any number of uh, dependencies keep on changing because it's a evolution uh, uh, evolution of technologies this nowadays so it keeps on changing we can't uh, always stick to one thing because the requirements keeps on adding the technology keeps on changing the hardware changes the software changes the everything changes so nothing is constant so obviously our software code to match the hardware and the speed or the network or other things or all of those scenarios if i consider obviously there's a change in even my source code so instead of whenever i'm using a new class to match with the new requirements i have to change my main class so that's the drawback i need to change my main class every time a new class is added a new resource is added i need to go ahead uh, and remove the previous entry and add the new entry right now that's a definitely a problem because i don't want to keep doing that funny business all along once I develop a code that should be a static one until and unless there is some serious uh, change I don't want to go ahead and change my main class. So that's a good design actually. Uh, it's an industry standard. Keep the uh, soft coding, hard coding to a minimum. We should make it as minimum as possible. For that purposes only these frameworks and abstractions are into the uh, scenario. To solve this problem we can do the following we can create a new interface which specifies the business requirement so i'll have a new interface let us say interface business requirements okay now it will have a method send mail okay now the class which have business method must implement this interface so this is my interface send mail or business interface it got a method send mail now whatever the classes are there it should all implement this interface okay and our main application instead of getting business method from the class it can get it from dependency injection so that in future we need not to update accordingly so earlier we directly used to accept from the uh, mail class to our directly application so we got one more thing we got to remove the previous thing add new thing we got one more thing we got to remove the previous thing add one more thing so instead of doing that i'll create an interface make my business classes implement this interface and using spring dependency injection i'll inject the respective classes methods i'll directly use through i'll directly get these objects using dependency injection so that whenever in future if i have a new resource coming up so obviously that resource will implement this interface and the method will be the same send mail so no matter how you send mail i am not bothered about it i just want you to send mail you send it ultra fastly super fastly fastly normally slowly whatever it is for slow users less users premium users whatever users they are you have to send mail and to send mail you gotta implement an interface so that's our business requirement so obviously that class will be implementing that interface and spring dependency will give us the object of this implementing interface class so we are not bothered about what spring independence injection does internally and how it generates that class object we are not bothered about that until and unless it's a child uh, class of interface i just want it to use so that in future no, mean, no matter how many classes comes i just no need to change my main class main logic at all to send the mail okay so that's what how uh, the dependency injection is used it's a uh, uh, very much so that's the reason why most of the people while at the designing phase they design using interfaces 
and it's a good logic even if we design we have to always design using interfaces so that's what is called api so whatever the functions or the methods present in an interface are the business methods so whatever the classes are there so we just in future keep on changing the jars we are not changing any source code we'll just change the jars and we'll get new functionalities so no need code coding change would be zero percent and there will only be change of jar otherwise if we don't use this logic if you use our previous logic we have to change the jar as well as the coding so that is a bother i don't want to change the coding because in future there might come some another person i may leave the company and go and there might come some another programmer who may find hard like which is the line and what are the methods i need to replace so if i do it like that way it would be a problem in future for me or for my fellow programmers if i follow this particular approach it would be easy for me and my fellow programmers okay so let us see proceed with our spring core so even still we are in the core only we are still in the dependency injection core module only uh, so uh, why are we stressing this much out on the core because in future uh, all of the other modules are dependent on the core module so we will not discuss over there how the core module works and what are the different functionalities provided by core module we will just directly use them so that's the reason why we are using it over here <clears throat> so event is a specific action performed on the component or object so we'll see how the event handling is working in spring so event is a specific action performed on a component or object to handle events execute same logic every time we can depend on our listeners the listener provide an event handling method to handle the event so event is something like uh, a user interaction or some kind of input for our program there's something change in the environment that is an event that might be due to some user interactivity that might be due to some server down that might be due to some time change the reason can be there can be many event performs okay so multiple events can be but those events can start uh, can be as a input to our program so to respond to a event we need to have listeners so whenever an event occurs if we want the notification we need to listen to that interface so that listening whatever class is done is called listener okay like uh, in swing we have uh, button listeners whenever a user clicks the button we have button listeners action event called so if we uh, register over the button so whenever user clicks we'll get an action event for the user click we even have uh, in javascript html on mouse over in these, these kinds of but uh, in programming we'll have some different events we'll not have any clicks or that, uh, like those things we'll have some other events okay so all events are objects as we know java is an object based programming exception threading everything events everything is an object and all listeners are interfaces in java environment so if you want to make our class a listener we got to implement some specific interfaces so if we implement some interfaces so our class will become a listener so in order to perform in event handling four details are required source object something example like button component we need to have these okay event some action event we have to have like for example action event listener for example action listener event handling methods for example action perform so we got to implement this listener to make a class a listener and we'll get an event object for every event occurred and we'll have a method that will be executed for every action and we'll have a source object where all of these uh, resources are present okay In Spring environment, event handling is given to notify when the Spring container is activated or deactivated in the Spring based applications or Java based applications where Spring is also used. Okay, so this is how an uh, event is uh, occurred in a Spring environment. 
in spring environment will get notified whenever the spring container is activated or deactivated so that's what uh, an event is so whenever a container is activated or deactivated or refreshed we'll get an event this event handling helps programmer to notice how much time the spring related business logic is executed in the project so we can uh, mod, uh, have a look of uh, time taken by a spring uh, program to how much time that did it take to execute the logic using this uh, spring events so this is a typical scenario where we can use spring event mechanism to perform event handling on spring application we need the following details the same thing as the previous things here we have uh, listed out some previous things but this uh, were very much basic like uh, these are belong to java.awt or java.string packages so the same thing are over here but the examples differs so the source object nahi just more otro the source object would be an application context container event object would be an application event listener would be an application listener event handling methods on the application event so there are some different event handling methods so in short we got to implement an listener interface we'll get an event object we will have some methods that will be executing whenever the event occurs and we'll have a source object which contains all of these informations event event handling on a spring container can be performed without touching existing java source code of an application that's a plus point what we get in event handling in spring so uh, we are using spring let us say from the past 3 years so now i just wanted to came across to some slowness i just want to know who is causing the slowness so to that i could just go ahead and add the event handling mechanism and uh, check out the time so based on the time i'll come to know who is the main reason of making my application slow which method okay or which event or at what time it's happening it helps us you in debugging yeah just before the uh, event starting i'll give a starter like at the application starting i'll give a starter like system dot current millisecond so whatever the time it would be i'll keep that order and at the end time i'll again count the same current milliseconds and uh, i'll just uh, do the minus operation between the start end time and the start time so that i'll get an idea how much total time is uh, taking for my spring container to evaluate a logic so base yeah time to calculate time time is some very much java basic right uh, why why would i do some heavy stuff or heavy burdening just to get time uh, because i can get time using very much simple things very much java basic things so i'll get it using that only right if i want to do some heavy container tasks or any abstraction layer things i would go for string but just for getting time why should i even bother spring touching spring because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes 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 no no it's nothing like from the system uh, so let us say a typical scenario would be like this uh, a new version of spring has been released okay so i was earlier i was using some 1.x now i am using 2.x so but uh, due to migration i got some performance uh, degradations 
so i just wanted to know what is the actual time and why is it taking that much i want to do some debugging and r and d of my code at that time moment this uh, uh, event handling mechanism comes in very much handy there are very uh, many other places where you can use uh, event handling but it's a one of those things okay so application context container the advanced container they have, we have two containers right bean factory container and application context container so application context container has supports has support for three events just a moment please be online so context refreshed event request handle event and context closed event so whenever a con our spring context is refreshed we'll get context refreshed event invoked and whenever we have request handle event but this request handle event is supported only in web application it gets activated for every request so whenever we get a request we can act uh, this particular request event request handle event gets generated and context closed event so at the time of closing of our spring container this contain uh, event gets invoked okay so basically we can think of them like this this is a spring container constructor which is uh, activated whenever the spring is uh, constructed and this is uh, like the finalized method so this gets uh, called whenever the spring container is getting to be destroyed okay so uh, example user defined lifecycle methods spring bean allows configuring our own methods to act lifecycle methods so instead of okay we'll just have some example of uh, these context reference and context closed events so how to do spring event mechanisms we'll have a look on that okay so this is my basic interface with some business method declaration this is my business logic class which implements that interface and provides the implementation of that business method it's nothing but uh, retaining the message where it's very much basic so here i got one helper class i have created a new class so this is as our first look program only okay there's nothing special over here other than i got an extra class which implements application listener okay so application listener is an in listener interface whenever i implement this interface my class will become a listener so i'll keep on listening to some specific events so what are the specific events so whenever the application context get refreshed or started or ended i'll get an method this method invoked okay on application event and this is the object what i get from the spring container whenever an application uh, event is generated event is raised so it got some methods using which i can find out or do some other tasks so what here's what basically i am doing uh, i want to print out the time between the starting of the container and the time taken to the end of the container the start time and the end time uh, and i just want to print out the difference between the end time and the start time so so i'm just printing out a sop control in this method whenever this method gets invoked this will get printed after that i am saying some index of if it is context refresh event then this application object will have a string called uh, context reference event in it so and if the index is not equal to minus one i want to start so whenever the context is refreshed so i want to start and whenever the context is closed i want to end time and after the end time i am just printing out and the difference between the start time and the end time as you can see system dot current milliseconds is a method current time millis is a method present static method of system class which uh, returns me the milliseconds of the current time so that's time from here to here 
time from context refresh event to context close event would be the total time of my container so i'm just printing out okay okay is it this logic is clear with you so so in my configuration file what are the special things i need to do for making an listener event handling let us see so there are no special things i need to give i just need to specify that there is a bean existing called helper so i am just specifying that there is a bean existing helper that's it so in that helper class i am implementing those interfaces but in the configuration file i need not to do some special configurations okay so after that I have our basic thing for some class i am having an id and it got a property called message for that i am assigning value hello so demo enter impl for the message value i am giving hello so it would be hello what are the username passed have a great day so in my main application this is my main application got the uh, spring uh, container activated getting a object from the container and printing out the business method then i am making it sleep for two seconds so that uh, i want to extend the time of the uh, container then i am closing it so note that here i am not uh, specifying over anywhere that uh, helper class methods i am not calling this method on application event i am not calling that method over here so that method will be invoked automatically by string whenever the context is refreshed or closed okay here here i am not calculating for a particular business method uh, here i am calculating the whole time of a container how much time you, the container is take the spring container itself to start from the starting time of the container to the end of the container the total lifetime of the container how much time it took so i am calculating that okay it's not a, for, a particular business method if i want to do for a particular business method I could have done it over here only the starting time and the ending time over here only here I would say here I'll get the start time and here I would get the difference yes so this there could be also a scenario like uh, uh, at the time of the the starting time of a spring container we want to load some default values into our application according to our business logic we have some default values that should be loaded into the application so at some middle time of the application in running i want to give some new values so at that time uh, i want the container to be refreshed and if the container is refreshed i want the new values again to be reflected into my application so what i will do uh, here in my helper class in the refresh event in this if block i'll write the logic to uh, reload all the default values new default values so that could also be a typical example where we can use uh, this event handling mechanism So the container activated for 2015 milliseconds. So container got started at this point and container got closed at this point. So in between we'll have hello friends have a great day and all of our business logic will be in between of the container starting and ending. Okay. So, so the total time was this thing. If I have remove this thing it would be even much less but uh, our concept is not about how to know or how to increase or reduce the spring time so i just wanted to show how to use the event handling mechanism in spring the first option was to implement 
application listener interface using that we need to implement a method called on application event we got some object called application event and it has string in it and it string contains context refresh event and context close event so whenever the context get refreshes or even get started it will have in it string as context refresh event as event part even string part so based on that we are doing things okay okay if you want to know the uh, uh, this example is not about how to get the debugging of a particular business method this example was uh, to know how much spring container is taking time okay because it only has uh, for refreshing or starting or closing only these two are the events what we are using so there's a no way for this example to know which method is taking how much time no uh, in spring we had we got some other uh, beautiful thing called aop aspect oriented programming uh, using that we can do it very much easily without touching the business method at all we could know which business method is causing trouble so we'll will when we get over there we'll understand how the aspect oriented programming works and how can we debug uh, which business method is taking too much of time so for now we'll stick with the container part how much time is container loading whenever we change the jars to see the performance we can do this okay or to whenever we have a requirement at the time of refreshing the events we want to uh, refresh something or at the time of closing the container we want to release all the database connections we want to close all the connections objects in the connection pool or we need to nullify something we want to garbage collect we can use these events no no in the ppt i didn't uh, mention that i said it orally uh, at that uh, place where we can get that in the ppt i didn't uh, mention uh, we can debug it in the ppt i just always mention the conceptual things the theoretical things i never mentioned in the ppts where to use a concept is up to us we'll have the requirement and which requirement best suited uh, for the theoretically it's up to the programmer or the designer but uh, uh, i mostly very much uh, uh, i reduce giving uh, examples in the ppts because if i give example directly in the ppts the ppt size will go very much larger so that's the reason i never give examples in the ppts yeah and this is not only the one scenario there can be many other scenarios like i said business specific uh, reload events we'll have to load some default values because generally in our applications we'll use uh, uh, internationalization uh, in the internationalization we want to uh, load defaultly some five or six packages five or six properties if we are uh, deploying in the french so we'll know commonly what are the french people are the languages they are using so they those guys are using french those guys are using italian those guys are using english so we defaultly load these three, three property files so in the future we come to know that they are even using some other language spanish so we'll defaultly load uh, even that thing so we would just uh, want to refresh the spring container and the, the refreshal will give that as input so at, in those type of requirements we can use these things and uh, at the uh, revival of the spring container whenever we want to we are about to close the spring container our objects are very much important if we database connection objects if we don't close them 
will uh, affect the other applications which are using the same database so database connection objects are, are always very much uh, costly resources so we are uh, very much recommended to close those uh, objects whenever we don't use this so if a spring container if we are utilizing them but we are not closing them so it's a drawback for us even because of using spring the objects even after uh, being utilized they are not closed so obviously they will be they will get closed based on the database after some time interval but up to some time the database server will be down because the connections were being utilized by our spring application so to avoid that at the time of closing we can release those connections okay so so we have seen how to uh, get these three events using spring container we have seen the interface so there are other uh, methodologies or other approaches we can do uh, spring event handling so instead of like let us say i don't want a predefined method that to be called the initialization or destroying i want my user defined method i'll say if my application name is like uh, banking application i'll uh, name my initialization method as init banking or load banking properties or start banking i'll have my own method names and i want those to be invoked okay at the starting time and the ending time so the spring even provides support for that thing we'll see how that is done so spring bean class allows us to configure user defined method acts as life cycle methods init life cycle method container call this method automatically after dependency injection process is completed on the bean properties whenever all no 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 it's nowhere related to the server in it is just uh, uh, a terminology what we generally do in all the applications this is nowhere yeah yeah spring container this is nowhere related to any other container this is only related to the spring container okay yeah yeah mm, but this is nowhere related to the tomcat or any server container this is only spring container you are talking about so <clears throat> let us say we got a start method instead of a init method we got start method and uh, i want to call i want container to call my start method whenever the application started so we got an methodology for that so this method is called automatically after dependency injection process is completed so once all the dependency injections are completed like all of, all of my objects are initialized with all the values then this method is called how we'll see in a moment so we can even have some destroy lifecycle method container will call this method just before destruction of spring bean class objects created by the spring container so similar to the previous thing at the starting refresh event and the close refresh event we can even have our own uh, init and destroy methods we'll have a look so we can configure these lifecycle methods in two ways programmatic semantics by implementing following interfaces by implementing initialization bean we can get a method called after property set okay so we'll just see the first thing how to do user defined so here uh, a point to remember we have implemented action listener okay so we'll see how to do user defined so let me just cross check okay this is not user defined so okay <clears throat> this is my user defined class called init in this uh, i am having a constructor and i got my setter then i have a method called init this is not constructor do not uh, uh, think of this as a constructor because it, it's got a return type okay this is a, a very much normal method okay with just a name happens to be quite similar to the class name but this is a normal method so this method i want to call whenever the spring bean initializes spring container 
starts so after all the property setting i want this method to be called and this is the destroy method i want to be called with a container so i'll not call these methods i want spring container to call these methods so to do that in the application uh, properties file i need to specify something like this so in the bean this is my class event this is the package name dot class name fully qualified class name okay so in it iphone method so in this i need to specify the method name which i want to call as init method so init is the method i want to call when the application got started so destroy is the method when i want to call so counterpart of init is the destroy destroy fun method I, I should specify the destroy method which i want to call which i want container to call okay so in my main application note that i am not calling anywhere the init method or the destroy method yes yeah similar to that only but uh, here we are not having any heavyweight uh, servers working on we are not uh, having any server running on but even though we will have our life cycle method starting and destroy method in user defined call black method ok let me just change over the statement so we can understand in user defined instead of callback i will say init method so here i will say factory dot close and here spring container destroy customer cleanup okay now if i execute this so as you can see uh, my uh, bean are been have been created and initialized so after that my first uh, init method got called and when the factory dot close was uh, called my container got destroyed my destroy method was invoked okay i'll just start my screen recording sorry Are you able to view my screen? So we have seen how to call our user defined lifecycle methods. We are just specifying uh, uh, init hyphen method and destroy hyphen method in the bean add tag so that we want our own uh, init or destroy method to be invoked. So even there are other uh, methodologies to call initialization or the destroying methods we'll have a look what are the other methodologies so we can configure these life cycle in two ways programmatic semantics by implementing the following interfaces by implementing initializing bean we'll get a method called after property set so whenever all the properties are set we can this method gets invoked and if we implement disposable bean we'll get a method called destroy uh, so this method gets invoked whenever a container is about to be destroyed so we have seen declarative statements we have an example of how to use these things but let us again have an overview so using the bean attributes init method and the destroy method as these lifecycle methods are user defined methods their names should be configured during the spring bean class configuration in the spring configuration file using init method and destroy method attributes of the bean tag note we can give any names for these lifecycle methods but init and destroy are standard names so like I, we have discussed we can give any names but init and destroy are the standard names what we generally and commonly every programmer does so it's a, it's a recommended one anyway whatever the name it is it is mandatory to configure them in the configuration file init method is useful to check whether appropriate values for injected into the spring bean properties are not through dependency injection destroy lifecycle method is used to nullify the bean properties and to release non java resources associated with the bean properties when the spring bean class object is about to be destroyed 
So these are the typical case scenarios where we use init or the destroy methods. It is always recommended to use init method and destroy method in the bean configuration file instead of implementing the initializing bean and the disposable bean interfaces to call unnecessarily coupled your code to spring. So basically we'll have uh, some dependencies if we implement uh, interfaces. So it is recommended to have code which has very much loose coupling. So if we want loose coupling, we it's uh, recommended to go for uh, user defined methods using init method and destroy method attributes of the bean tag. Uh, just as a refreshment, coupling is a term uh, which uh, defines or displays the dependency of one object to the other. If uh, let us say class A is very much dependent directly on class B without any interfaces. So then class A and B are tightly coupled. If class A is dependent on the class B only through an interface, so they are said to be loosely coupled. Okay. So if you want our uh, classes to be loosely coupled with spring, we have to use init method and destroy method attributes of the bean tag. It is a recommended over the other two ways. So let us see the other example of implementing interfaces so my processor implements bean post processor so this is also an interface if i implement this interface i'll get uh, post processing before initialization post processing after initialization these two are the methods which i get from this bean post processor okay uh, so this is as the name itself suggests before initialization of the beans and after initialization of the beans what should happen we can specify it over here okay so we will even get the object which is being initialized so we can print it out or we can nullify it we can give some special attributes which we don't want to specify from the xml or we can give some other things whatever we want we can do it over here and uh, at the time of initialization before nullifying i want to it's all it's uh, 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 around about from the threads to be released i can get come over here and do that so this can be used in that uh, scenario being post processor so then again it's the same thing there's no special uh, uh, configuration in the configuration file i just need to specify that there's a class which spring container should include at the time of uh, string uh, termination so i'm just uh, specifying a bean tag so again here it's a basic thing in this bean uh, pojo i'll have a integer variable and i am setting that integer variable and whenever that object is printed i want the value of the integer variable to be printed out okay very basic thing so i am assigning 10 over here so from the context path okay i am just getting the context path i am not even printing it out so let us see what happens if i only get the con uh, container So all of my methods called invoked. Why? In constructor n setter methods makes a very basic understanding because we are using advanced container, application context container. So this container will load all the values whenever the container is started. So in our case it's only one bean, so it has uh, created the object and initialized it. So before initializing the value we got our method invoked before initializing in so this is our method that got invoked before initializing and i have my string in so after initializing in so this in is the id okay so that comes as a string so 
that is how before and after initializing are coming up but how this 10 got printed that is somewhere explained over here because i am getting the object and i am printing the object over here in the post processing and even in the post after processing initialization so in these two methods i am just printing out that bean object okay so generally we used to do it in a demo client we used to implement uh, call those methods over here but i instead of doing over here i just did it over here okay that's the only way but this is not important what we want to see is this thing so implementing a bean post processor we'll get two methods post processor and uh, before initialization post processor after initialization so we can even do i think no this is again another so initializing bean and disposable bean so this gives me after property set and destroy methods so whenever i uh, say that uh, my pojo implements these two beans so spring container will call these methods whenever spring container is about to destroy or spring container is going to uh, have set the values after property sets I have already set all those values so this method will get after that in move so so any special configurations for this as usual there would be no special configuration even for that but uh, i am just specifying that the p1 value would be having 10 as value p1 variable p1 variable will have value 10 okay so in my class using advanced container i am getting the object and after getting the object i'm printing it out and after closing i'm uh, printing it even a statement from the main after container closing i'll just say from main so if i execute this the output would be similar but the terminologies are all different over here okay i think i just misspelled over here So the construct uh, bean got initialized and values got uh, set and after that in property after property set method got invoked. So after that I am printing out the object so I got two string invoked then after at the time of con uh, container destroying it got into the destroy method then the control is back in the main after container closing from main okay no 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 post and pre initialization to get those values i need to implement this interface bean post processor but this is again a programmatic approach what uh, I want uh, at the time of uh, uh, container after all property setting and container at the time of destroying pre and post is a bean post processor bean post processor is a interface which gives pre and post initializations but keeping that apart we have seen the same functionality in all of our uh, remaining examples we have application listener to do the same thing at the time of context refresh or context close the same thing in here we got implement initializing bean and disposable bean for uh, event we invoked at the time of context refresh or context closed the same thing even using our own init methods at the time of context uh, refreshing or starting i would say or at the time of context closing but this is a diff one thing uh, is different that is bean post processor which was uh, used to uh, call events at the time of 
before being initializing and before after being initializing we can always uh, go ahead and add club all these things into a simple program so we can do multiple things over here so if i say like this i i'll directly have to implement these methods so you know i can make a bigger program like that way so if i do over here so i'll get those respective things over here but i just don't want to club things i just want to make separate things every concept to be clear so i have created multiple programs okay so spring event provides supports for internationalization but uh, to see spring internalization internationalization we'll just have an uh, look generally how do we do spring internationalization uh, to use a basic this is a basic spring uh, this is a basic internationalization example this is nowhere related to spring okay so to use basic internationalization we need to uh, work with uh, something called locale class locale class we need to specify what are the uh, languages we are going to use and locale class is very much uh, dependent to the area code and uh, language so this is a default convention what we follow in internationalization and it's uh, nowhere uh, specified like this is only we should follow but it's a recommended one again okay so local class equal to en us so english of united states so whichever the in, uh, local class will have en underscore us will be invoked but i have no uh, local class with en underscore us so basically whenever i do that so the local would be the default one and default whenever i say whatever the app would be the resource bundle would be dot property file that would be invoked okay so if i give any error name over here so app dot property should be invoked if i open app dot properties you can see the default language i want to use is english and i got some basic english messages save english clear english delete english cancel english so i just wanted to uh, mention that these are the english type uh, things if i open canada the same thing save clear delete and cancel but at the right side i have mentioned english canada because i don't know canada so instead of changing the language i just uh, change the i have given some extra string to specify this is from another properties file of canada language okay so the same thing again <laughs> i don't know the another language i am specifying english uk i don't even know french so the same thing i am doing for the french file also french belgium french belgium but the messages i'm not changing but i know hindi hindi india tak de saaf kar de nikal de chhod de this is hindi and this is telugu petai saaf chai ti chai badlai some basic things for save clear delete and cancel okay so how to use them is the concept over here so if i specify some improper things so the default file will get in loaded in my resource bundle class so i'm using that resource bundle class to get those strings okay so this is a basic program of internationalization this is nowhere related to spring so we'll have an idea how things goes in basic then we'll see what's going on non spring so this is how a basic things goes we are getting our own english things so the default thing is english so even if i specify something wrong over here it should still work the same thing english okay so now let us give english ca this file i want to give okay underscore en underscore ca is the locale i want to be loaded into my resource bundle class and using that resource bundle class i'll get the messages so this is again a frame in that frame i am adding four buttons on clicking those buttons i am not giving any action interfaces i am just adding those and packing them i am not doing any heavy logic over here heavy logic okay so 
this should give me the english with kannada english kannada english kannada english kannada save delete okay but if i want telugu ap i i'll give over here telugu ap as you can see telugu underscore ap is the code so i'll give telugu ap okay something went wrong t e l u g u underscore ap Okay, why is it not loading? H I India. Is it loading Hindi? No, it is not even loading Hindi. No, no, it's not uh, considering these values as uh, uh, standard things. It's not taking them as standard. Let me just go. Argument must be provided as extension on the properties file. H I I N. H I I N. Uh -huh. It worked then, but it is not working now. H I I N. Okay, it is even not taking now. Ah, this is weird because it was working earlier. Let me just cross check with my other program which I have created without using Eclipse Spring tool suit okay okay I'll, I'll do that because you earlier said you are comfortable with Eclipse I have created all the examples using Eclipse No, it's a uh, it's a uh, always user's choice. It's uh, nowhere related to what we should do. Spring tool suit is again very much basic to the Spring itself, but uh, we never uh, develop all the applications in a single IDE. So. In our real-time projects, we have to work with uh, multiple technologies. We go for uh, even struts or Hibernate or other things. Or, you know, we even want some basic things. So, uh, even I didn't uh, use Spring Tool Suit in wherever I work. Because uh, we always used to, we are already, uh, always has free freedom to use. Uh, they didn't give us freedom to use my Eclipse also. But if we want the free versions, whatever we want, we can use it. So, okay, we'll work with the Spring Tool Suit whenever we when we are progressing. Okay. Java C I eighteen I'm dot Java. Java space I eighteen. Okay, basic English is coming. H I 
एच आई स्पेस आई एन ओके हिंदी इज कमिंग ओवर हियर वाई इज इट नॉट कमिंग ओवर देयर Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me just cross check. Okay. That is happening. Okay, I got my problem. so in my class path i uh, earlier i have added the that particular folder spring folder spring internationalization so from there it was picking up so over there i don't think hindi property file is present so it was picking up the default uh, properties file from there so here if i give now this should work properly i should get the hindi so i got my hindi okay similarly if i want telugu i'll give uh, t e l u g u and i will say ap telugu from ap please pop up petai saaf se se ti se yalle is it correct uh, i don't know much of telugu i speak very much, very little of telugu so then again i uh, i think you got the idea how to work with the internationalization okay this example is clear with you because the same example i have used for uh, spring internationalization yeah so in here let us see what i have done in my configuration file first in my configuration file um specifying resource bundle resource a resource bundle message source a class predefined class and this should be a uh, this is a begin predefined id what we should specify for our resource bundle message source if you want to use internationalization using spring we need to use this class of the predefined one and this should be case sensitive similar thing okay and for the base name we need to give our uh, app uh, application property name so in i uh, example it is app so i have given that over here okay so in my spring example i am creating the local again hard coding and after that i am starting my container and uh, in the container using that container i am getting the messages so earlier i was getting the messages using resource bundle resource bundle dot get string of str 1 2 3 4 but here i am getting the messages using container object factory object cts dot get message i am doing ctx dot get message str 1 str 2 3 and 4 so after getting the message i am just printing it out we uh, i'll dis we'll discuss what is this these are other things but first of all i want to change the class path again back to this otherwise it will pick up from our basic example don't want that to happen so i'll just remove that from the class path so okay now it 
build at the workspace now if i run whatever the str2 is that should become so str2 messages it should be clear str2 french be so str2 is clear french belgium we can also have property placeholders you can even give some property placeholders let us say we have some common validations logic in my properties file so i want to just replace those uh, validations property placeholders based on some of my business logic or based on some validations i'll change like i want to uh, usernames from french to have three characters username from british to have some six characters username from india to have 10 characters in the name so based on the logic i will change these placeholders at those situations spring provides support for that so if we are getting the messages so we need to give we can also give it like this so new string of an array of using hi and sai so if we, we have a look at our property file we got two placeholders so these placeholders are nothing but the string array over here okay i and sai i'll say p1 and p2 okay so whatever are the placeholder values are there i want that to be replaced with this string array and the default message is the message what uh, when it can't find this str1 okay and l is the locale from which the message should be retrieved so if i execute this i'll get something like save iphone p1 french p2 belgium okay so save p1 french p2 belgium is it clear so that's how we can even do spring internationalization okay sure i'll open it once again so here in the argument i specified an spring array in that array i specified p1 and p2 this is an anonymous array but if we want we can have it uh, we can do some heavy logic over here heavy logic or heavy validations then we can generate heavy logic to generate array okay to generate placeholders so the heavy logic could be like uh, get the ip address of the user and based on the ip address uh, we will categorize him and based on his category we will give him a respective placeholder value so that he will get his own uh, uh, message we can do whatever logic we want we can do but uh, at the end of the day we want some array to be generated based on our logic so that uh, array will pass it to over here okay mm -hmm. i want to retrieve the message with value str1 from frbe frbe has str1 string so i want to retrieve this thing so in this string i want to replace the placeholders so if for that purpose i have given new string so retrieve that string with the str1 replace the placeholders with these things if there is no uh, message with the str1 give the default message and the locale so these are the four arguments that are accepted by uh, get message of the container <clears throat> okay let us say we have given some other thing which is not present over there so we'll get the default message if we give null over here what will happen i am not providing any placeholders which is a very bad programming logic so if I don't specify, I'll get the directly placeholders without replacing. So then again, it's up to the programmer. He should specify. 
spring is not responsible for that if we are not uh, specifying it's our uh, mistake not the spring mistake spring has provided support we are not utilizing that it is in that way in the plain old java we have to use resource bundle so a specific thing for resource uh, bundle itself but here we are not using resource bundle Pojo, I didn't. Uh. Okay, previous example. So in yeah, even the placeholders we cannot give placeholder. It's not like we cannot give. If we give placeholders, it would be very much complex task over here. We need to give it manually like this, the placeholder over here. So after that, we need to change it. Uh, we need to retrieve this in our application. After retrieving the get string, we have to do replace all in our own thing. So we need uh, to do all, all the things, replace all something with something. Yeah. Yeah, the whole thing is uh, in that only. We are getting some extra features on internationalization which were not uh, which we do not give by basic uh, internationalization so then again here we can't specify the default argument for the get string and uh, once we if we want to load uh, multiple from multiple properties file we need to create multiple resource bundles with the multiple locales and they will have me from that we need to get the strings but in spring app if you want to get the message from multiple locales we just change the last argument if you want to have some different default messages we change the argument if you want to place a placeholder we change the argument if you want to get some base thing so this is a basic thing first argument uh, other three things are the additional things which we do not get in the basic uh, get message of the core that's the only advantage okay no 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 actually uh, how come any framework will know where is the user accessing from no thing will know because whenever the user access we only have his ip address or based on some other criteria based on the server we can know from where he is accessing how come the spring have knowledge of uh, user's ip address or where it is deployed the server uh, details Sorry, modality language, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, it's always the input from the user is given. We'll uh, show him whatever the language we support. We'll we can display him a drop down, uh, English, Hindi, Telugu, French, Belgium, Spain, whatever we have. We have all these languages support. Please select it into an appropriate one, or we can suggest him based on his area, based on his request, or based on the multiple times uh, uh, request generations. We can suggest him. These are the basic things which people want to see in languages. So we'll get an idea. Okay, we are generating these many languages. Now for this language, we got these many requests. So maybe the user from this area also 
he also wants the same language you can suggest him do you want this page to be translated in this language but then again the choice should be made from the user string is nowhere responsible the code is again from the programmer side yeah spring is nowhere uh, uh, intelligent to uh, automatically understand the user and generate these arguments so we should help spring by taking the input from the user and provide these arguments so after that spring gives us the support but till that part we need to uh, give the input to the spring container okay so shall we proceed So, factory bean, a special bean class that can return other class object instead of its own object is called factory bean. In a, a regular programming, we will come across many predefined factory bean classes. When uh, factory bean configuration, I, bean ID is configured as dependent value to our bean class property will not be injected with factory bean class object it will be injected with some other class object and return factory bean class so any class returning uh, object of any other class that class we can specify it as a factory bean okay it's like a factory which uh, generates or develop or produces objects of some other classes ice cream factory something like that okay a factory which has production a class which has a production of other class objects we can call it as a factory bean to make spring bean class as factory bean class make that bean class implement factory bean interface or the spring bean work bean dot factory dot factory bean interface if we implement a class this interface we can say our we can say our spring bean is a factory bean factory bean hyphen bean is a spring in spring facilitates to create a bean by factory class factory class will not will have non static methods to return the object of bean factory class must have a static method to return the instance of class itself so basically factory class uh, it is not mandatory to return some other class object it can also have method to return its own class objects so if it has methods to return its own class object that method should be a static one if it is returning some other class object then that method should be an instance one okay so generally why should i even go for factory bean i am good with the constructors part i am good with the setters and getters to create an object i want i am very much reliable with the constructors why should i even think about factory bean let us say we have a constructor which is private oops i didn't thought of that functionality till now i have a requirement where i should make a class constructor as private but uh, at that time spring is it useless is it doesn't it have any support to generate objects which are private constructors no using some factory mechanism we can do that okay so when spring bean class has private constructor we cannot create its object from outside then we can give instruction to spring container to create object of bean class using factory method so instead of using constructors now spring construct uh, spring container will use factory bean to factory methods to generate uh, objects it is recommended to use static factory method to return instance of its own class and instance factory method to return instance of other class okay so if factory method expects uh, any arguments then pass that arguments using constructor argument in the configuration file okay if our uh, factory methods has uh, any input taking as arguments let us say some integers or something so we want to pass those uh, as integers we have to use constructor argument in the con uh, configuration file while configuring spring bean class if 
class attribute is not there and factory bean factory method attributes are there then spring container uses instance factory method of the specified factory bean class to create spring bean object so if it is a static factory method we can directly specify but uh, if it is an instance factory method to specify we are using instance factory method we have to skip the class attribute of the bean tag and we skip the class attribute but we keep factory bean and factory method attributes we'll see how to generate a factory using spring okay so it will make more sense for us so this is my interface this is my bean implementing the interface having the setters two setters for two objects and a business method so test bean test bean implements factory bean okay so factory bean is a predefined interface of org dot spring bean or factory dot factory bean so it got three methods get object get object type is singleton so whenever i want to create object using factory bean my own factory bean i need to make my bean as factory bean by implementing this interface so spring container will call this method whenever the object we want to retrieve and respective these methods will use whenever we want to get the object type or check whether the object is singleton or not okay so here uh, we need to do all our complex logics if you want to take control over the container bean factory i don't want to uh, depend on the spring container i want to make my own container factory bean i don't want to get the objects from the spring container because i have some of my own requirement or product uh, re specific requirements then i can go for factory bean so in my configuration class as you can see there's no special property or special bean tag i'm specifying to make that test bean as factory bean i'm just specifying the bean with the class and id so in my main application i'm activating the spring container getting the object printing the business method using the business method so here again i am nowhere utilizing the test bean object in the client in my main application okay so let us see whether spring calls or factory methods or not so e singleton get object e singleton get object called two times we'll see why it got two times then again date and calendar objects are my uh, predefined uh, things so or my business method from this uh, i this is the high class printing the data and the calendar objects so that got the output but why there are two times over here e singleton get object e singleton get object so if i check there's an, we are only printing it over here get object and e singleton we are not printing it twice but here i have two objects created so one is the demo bean and another is the this bean so uh, for every bean this factory has been called okay so that's one way to make our bean as a factory bean so there's also another way around to make our bean as factory bean so we can just to say factory method whatever the method it is we want to invoke or factory method whatever the method we want to invoke okay so for the predefined calendar class there's a met factory method get instance whatever we generally do using gaussian calendar gaussian calendar dot get instance so that is a get instance method and similarly we can have user defined factory method got get test bean so get test bean is a static method get test bean is a static method and i want this to be invoked whenever the 
uh, object is required of the test bean okay so i'll return a object from here so yes this method has to be configured in the xml file and if there are any argument those arguments should be configured using constructor r tag okay yeah in spring framework is a uh, very much uh, sophisticated uh, implementation of factory pattern design uh, factory patterns so it's a factory bean itself uh, we have discussed uh, at the time of not now when we started uh, uh, discussing over the spring we have discussed how container uh, uh, sends the object of springs i think i have even drawn the diagram for that let me just check if i draw that or not yeah here so a spring container is you can see this is acting as a factory bean he is having objects from the by reading the xml file he is creating objects of a respective classes and giving back those objects so spring container is like a factory bean which creates and manages the life cycle of the these all objects okay which are created by this thing but it doesn't uh, takes responsibility of any object that we create by ourselves using new keyword it only takes the responsibility of objects which we take from the spring container okay so in this example spring container is a factory bean because he is uh, generating or producing or acting as a factory to generate objects of some posers so obviously he needs the help of some xml file reading some of those xml file he will know how to what are the things he should uh, include in those objects what are the default values or what are the setters and thirds and what are the variables and th for those he should specify the values what are the constructor arguments all those things he'll know but i don't want to uh, use spring container default mechanism i want my own container to be used whenever an object creation is used so in that scenarios we are talking about so if i want my own factory method to be invoked instead of spring something so spring container even provides support for that so it will invoke my own factory method whenever i an, i want an object so here in this factory method it takes an argument so i'm providing the argument using constructor arm tag get test bean is a static method as you can see this is a static method which takes in an argument so <clears throat> and uh, this is a return type this method returns test bean so this method returns an id whenever i get the t1 it will return test bean and uh, it will invoke this static method at that moment so the other things are the similar thing in demo enter is my interface with some business method demo bean is my bean which implement that interface and business method so demo client in the client i'm just getting db and printing out db so here in my application db is a demo bean which has a reference bean as t1 so whenever i want to use t1 i'll get this factory method invoked so if i execute this i'll see the application of static factory method got invoked to get the object of tb okay so earlier we have seen to make a class as factory bean we had implement an interface that interface was factory bean but if i don't want it in this way there's also another way around that is in the application context file you need to specify the factory method 
okay what if i don't have static i want to return uh, instance uh, method i want to return uh, some other class objects i have to go for instance method so for that in my demo bean so from my demo bean i am having an instance method factory method which doesn't return its own class object it returns some other class object test bean test bean is some other class okay so for the some other class i want to uh, whenever uh, i want an object of this class i want this method to be invoked okay but as a last point from the ppt while configuring spring bean class if class attribute is not there and factory bean factory method attributes are there then spring container uses instance factory method of the specified factory bean class so i should make or skip the class attribute of the bean of test bean let us see so get test bean is a method now for this bean i am skipping the class attribute as you can see there's no class attribute for that thing so whenever i acquire t1 object i want get test bean method to be invoked so that get test bean method is present in demo bean class so in that demo bean only i am having the reference of t1 as tb so in my demo bean i have tv so whenever i get the i want to get the object of tv i don't want to invoke the constructor of test bean i want to invoke this uh, particular instance method so at that scenario i can use one more time the factory mechanism of spring container this is the third method how i can make a bean as a factory bean okay so in my class bean again i am getting the demo bean object and from the demo bean object i am saying hello then i am getting the test bean object using factory dot get bean of t1 then i am printing out t1 dot get company so zero parameter as constructor of demo bean instance factory of demo bean instance factory of demo bean returns me the uh, object of uh, another class not demo bean class it was returning the object of test bean class demo bean object demo bean get test bean method returns an object of test bean class so we have used the test bean object so for that purpose it was returning that thing. so constructor of the test bean got invoked then good morning friends excel online classes so these are some basic messages what I have used. So in demo bean I have business method and in test bean I have get company method. So that explains the output but here we have seen how to use instance method. Instance factory method. So we'll yeah i was saying the same thing <laughs> okay we'll continue tomorrow with the wiring thing so let us summarize what we have done today okay uh, today we have seen event handling and different methodologies how we can use event handling using implementing in what interfaces uh, we have seen what are the methods we get and we have even seen uh, by doing some declarative uh, uh, methods we can even do event handlings and we have seen internationalization support in, in spring and uh, then we have seen some factory methods how to make a class as a factory class so th those are the things what we have complete today only event handling internationalizations and factory beans so tomorrow we'll see what uh, what is wiring and how to work with wiring okay okay and uh, the next exercise for you is please don't skip the exercise i think you are in a hurry
so uh, what should I give you an exercise exercise should come so write a program so we'll finish up with the assignment so assignment is like write a program that demonstrate the usage of initialization comma destroy yeah sure i'll do that so that demonstrate the use of uh, uh, initialization destroy methods and uses factory beans so in short whatever you have covered today i just want you to write a big program which uh, includes the thing but you need not to do all of these force uh, event handling mechanisms only do the last one the user defined initialization and destroy methods because that is the uh, most commonly and recommended used uh, method and i want to uh, you to use factory beans okay so just a simple program okay Yeah, sure. I'll right away. I'll do that. Okay, sure thing. Bye.